Hello and welcome to YHTV's Flowing Into Awareness with visionary and master intuitive Anatara. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host for this program. Today's topic is, who helps you to be real? And with us is our beautiful <laughs> Anatara. You real. help me to be real. <laughs> well, thank you. I agree. You, you you do the same for me. Yes, you help all of us to be real. That's why we're flowing into awareness. <laughs> all together. There you go. <laughs> I, uh, I, love, I love the word real because it's sort of like truth. It's one yes. of those words that it could have so many different kinds of meaning. And so if, if we're trying to understand who or what helps us to be real which we'll talk about more in a minute, <laughs> it, it helps to have an idea of what real is. You know, to, to each of us, it's probably a little different. Um, my definition of real in this little discussion is being and, and representing and living as and showing what the, the most true <laughs> and, and precious part of your essence is all about. Mm. So there is, you know, there is this stream of being, this stream of consciousness connected to the all that is that flows through into this life, this physical and material life that we live and lead, that is representative of what is really us. And sometimes we're looking for what we feel is really us. Sometimes we are not aware of how to express who, who we really are or what is real for us. Uh, just because we don't know how to, how to taste it. You now that may seem strange, but, but how do we taste our own reality? What senses do we use to say, oh, that's the real me and that's not the real me? Or, or that taste is so familiar and, and, and so deliciously um, seductive to me that maybe that's the real me. And that taste of, of, of something, that a behavior of mine that I, that I have or a friend that I'm engaging with, now that doesn't taste so, so good to my palate, to my palate of definition of self. So there's a lot, lot having just been said. <laughs> One of the easiest way, ways to find out what is real for yourself is to ask about who reflects to you or who helps you be real. So sometimes it's a what. Sometimes we drive a certain kind of car because we think, oh, this feels like it represents the real me. Or we wear, wear certain kinds of clothing. Or we read certain kinds of magazines or books because it feels or tastes like or sounds like or stimulates us in a way that says, this is helping me to be real. And, and much of the time that is true. The thing that we are most interested in, the thing that tastes the best, <laughs> that makes us tingle the most, <laughs> that makes us salivate the most, maybe those are things that are directing us to, into um, um, an understanding of and an observation of what is real, who we really are. And maybe some of those things are rather things that we have adopted because we thought that was the real us. There was an idea that we heard from our parents or a friend or, or some idea that bubbled up inside us that said, um, you'll be real someday when you own a sports car. Uh, you'll be real someday mm. when you've written a paper about such and such. You'll be real someday when you achieve a certain kind of feeling in a relationship. Well, maybe that feeling belongs to somebody else's relationship. <laughs> and and maybe that, that fast sports car, that automobile, when you step into it, it just doesn't match you. There's nothing about it that feels good to your body. And maybe you don't really like going quickly. <laughs> maybe mm -hmm. you'd rather be walking slowly. So... Again, who or what helps you or shows you how to be real? Um, my, my quest here is to give each of you the invitation that you allow yourself to really feel, you know, sort, sort of look at everything and pick a given day and look at everything that goes on for yourself in that day. And ask every time you choose to do a new thing or you get on a subway or you get into your car or you turn on the music on the radio, you arrive at work, uh, you arrive somewhere to play with someone, 
do all of those individual things help you to feel real? And if it's a who, who gives you in your life, who gives you the best reflection of what really feels like you? Um, is there a person who always seems to say the right thing to you that helps you say, oh, yeah, I get it? Uh, is there a person who wants to make you, makes you want to run away and hide? And you say, no, 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 that's not real. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but allow those answers to come. You know, is this something that makes me feel real? Is this something that it doesn't make me feel real? Because eventually and ultimately, you're the only person who can, who can make that evaluation and make the choice to be real or not to be real. How is your reality coefficient? <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's, this is such an interesting topic, Anatara, because I, I, I do believe that it is so important for us to visit this topic mm-hmm. and create this awareness on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. It's almost like if, you, if you're not conscious of it, set a timer to ask yourself. You know, it's like, bing, bing. Okay, you know, it's, it's like every day we ask ourselves, what are the three things we're grateful for each day? So it puts our lives into perspective. And I feel like saying, oh, wait a minute. This is another bing bing, (laughs) you know, (laughs) what makes, what have you done today that's made you feel real and Mm -hmm. truly connected to heart, truly connected to yourself? Because, Mm -hmm. you know, I can remember those days where I feared being real. Mm -hmm. I had this terrible fear that people wouldn't accept me for who I knew I was and not the person I was presenting. Because, again, it's societal, it's cultural, it's religion, it's, you know, all these things are added up and you create these veils and these layers of veils. And it's like, oh my, if, if I show the real me, will I be liked? Will I be loved? Will I be accepted in the society? Yeah. And, and where does the real, go, real you go? You know, where do we hide when we're not being real? Absolutely. You, know, we, you know, we create these definitions of who we're supposed to be or what, we're supposed to, what our behavior is supposed to be like. We, we lose that connection to the real us, and then we stop reaching into the full potential of who we are when, or could be. When we're not being real to ourselves, we are not allowing the universe to gift us with the experiences that the real us wants. And we get caught in this dynamic of, of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it negative, even though I don't like that word, mm-hmm. negative self-fulfillment, mm-hmm. where, where we're stepping on our toes all the time. And we are, I'm going to say, tragically diffusing the, the brilliance and the excitement of, of who we are. And, and when I say brilliance of, and, and excitement of who we really are, it doesn't mean that we're just jumping up and down all the time and and overly ebullient and excited what it means is that is that we are we are content we are stimulated we are are engaged in what is the real us and and being the real us the real you is always going to lead us into the into the the, the stream of existence that we came here to be um, with the universe constantly wanting to reinforce that for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite amazing. I think this is a topic that we could go on about because it, it, it's truly very powerful because there's so many stages and there's so many stages of realization. Um, And I I know daily as it's like suddenly, Oh, I've just slipped back into a habit (laughs) and I, Oh, that's not, really how I feel? That's not really who I am? Mm-hmm. Is this really where I want to be? <laughs> and I was like, really? Yeah. And it, it, it's amazing. And we wonder why, I, I do believe in some aspects that this is a, a cause of many people with their issues of depression or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, misguidance, sadness, um, disease. sickness. Yes, mm-hmm. dis-ease, absolute <laughs> dis-ease, right? Disease, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, yes, I, I, I think, Anatara, that we, we need to branch this off <laughs> to, further, <laughs> well, to expand this topic even further and really sure. fine-tune it into the different areas. Well, we can, we can do that. Yes. <laughs> we, yes. We, can, we can step into that. Look at the way the universe has invited you and I to do that. 
Absolutely. We are being our real selves. And, and, you know, there's probably a different word that might be just as meaningful as the word real, true, real, whatever it might be. But we do understand what we're talking about right now. And, you know, when you were talking about how we fall back into a habit, those habits that we, um, that we, that they, they become contagious, yes. like, literally, they, they continue to come back. It's like recatching a cold over and over and over again, because that's what we come to know. And that's what we come to accept, you know, whether it's, whether it's holding on to holding up and supporting that brilliance of ours or not. Right. But, you know, we take it and we, we, we somehow believe it in our acceptance of yes. it and then it just it, it you know it, it just keeps flowing yes. the contagion increases it we don't ever step out of it yes. so you know if we, we but the last time we spoke we talked about saying what we really mean you know speaking without without filters as babies and children's do using our voice our sound our creativity our our expression of self to to be um to be a representation of our real selves. It's, it's all related. Mm -hmm. And, and whether we, whether we, we do it by observation first and and then try an experiment here and there, (laughs) or whether we just like step right into it and say, okay, I'm going for it. I don't, I'm going to just see what happens as I, as I allow myself to stick with the real me. And, and then I'll work on what the repercussions of that are. And perhaps that's just as powerful and and just as, as, as an acceptable way to do it as anything else. Mm -hmm. I don't think it matters. What matters is that we notice who or what helps us to be real. And we continue to follow those things. Mm-hmm, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. That's yes. the most important thing. Yes. And, and yes, it's just the stages, just stages. One step yeah. at a time. <laughs> breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Always breathe. Always breathe. Oh, this is wonderful topics. Thank you so much, Anatara. You're welcome. Yes. Remember to be real. Authentic. There's Authentic. the word. <laughs> there. Now that's a beautiful word. That is a beautiful word. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Anatara, for another wonderful session. And of course, we would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us in this new platform of education and information. We're grateful for your continuous support and we look forward to hearing your feedback on how we can serve you better. You can connect with Anatara by following her on Twitter, at Anatara, and of course, through her own website, anatara.ca, anatara.ca. We always look forward to your comments, your suggestions, your questions. Please do so by scrolling down on the screen and entering into the comment box or give us a call at 818-LET'S-TALK. 818-LET'S-TALK. Thank you for joining us today. And until next time, namaste. Even then, I realized it's not that someone is different or having these strange experiences. It, it's what it means to them. So I, I assumed it would be scary, like Martians or something. And she said, oh, no, no, they're smiling. They keep me company. And I realized that that was, other than coming to the emergency room, that was for her social contact. And to give her medication, to mm-hmm. take that away without giving her something else would have been cruel. 